Okay, today we're going to learn our next two exponent rules, power of zero and negative exponents. Yesterday we learned about the product of powers rule, which is where we multiply two, um, two rules, two uh, exponents with the same base. We um, multiply the coefficient, um, keep the base, add the power. Okay, then we also learned about the quotient of powers rule, which is where we see division. So when we, um, so when we, we keep the base, well, we divide the coefficients, keep the base, subtract the powers. Okay, so now we're going to learn about our third one. Okay, so we're going to kind of like explore this using the division rule. So using the, the quotient of powers rule to help us understand the power of zero. Okay, so if I were to write this using my, my, division, my division rule, my quotient of powers rule, I would write 15 to the 2 minus 2, which works out to 15 to the 0 power. Okay, same with 47 to the fourth over 47 to the fourth. I would write 47, so I keep the base, subtract the exponents, and I wind up with 47 to the zero. Well, the same thing happens here. I would have four to the three minus three is zero. 1,739 to the two minus two, which is zero. Negative 32 to the two minus two, which is zero. And then this one in parentheses, I have negative 32 to the 5 minus 5, which is 0, okay? So, so all of these problems give me a 0 power. So we've got to figure out what that means, okay? So let's start by putting these in our calculator and seeing what do we actually get when I put 0, when I put one of these in my calculator, what do I actually get? Okay, so let's try this first one. 15 to the 0 power gives me 1. 47 to the 0 power gives me 1. Interesting. Okay. 4, whoopsie, that's not it. 4 to the 0 power also gives me 1. Are you seeing a pattern here? What do we think 1739 to the 0 power is going to give us? Well, if you said 1, you were right. Okay. So, so far what I'm seeing is that when I raise a number to the 0 power, its answer is 1. So why is this? Okay, so let's talk really quickly about what happens here. Well, if I take 4 to the 3rd, let's just actually simplify this. 4 to the 3rd. Well, 4 to the 3rd is 64 over 4 to the 3rd, which I already know is 64. Any number divided by itself is what? 1. That's why 0 power is 1, because when I subtract these and I get the 0 power, it's basically the same thing as dividing that number by itself, which gives me 1. Okay, and again, this is all shortcuts. We're finding shortcuts. Okay, now I want to talk real quickly about these two because these two are kind of a special situation. So let's put these in our calculator. We have negative 32 to the 0 power. And I'm expecting 1, but I get negative 1. Okay, now I'm a little freaked out. Like, what's going to happen here? If I put negative 32 in parentheses to the 0 power, I get positive 1. Okay, so why is this happening? Okay, well, this is an order of operations issue that you're seeing here. Okay, so your calculator does exactly what you tell it to. And what, remember, when we have PEMDAS or Gemma, or I, I think let's, let's, let's use Gemma because it makes sense. Okay, exponents, so it's grouping exponents, multiplicative, additive. Flipping the sign is considered a multiplication operation because we flip the sign by multiplying by negative 1 or dividing by negative 1. Okay, so if I look at this from a purely order of operations standpoint, it's going to raise 32 to the 0 power first, and then it's going to flip the sign. So it's saying 32 to the 0, that's 1. Okay, what's the opposite? Negative 1. This one, everything is inside the parentheses, so it's raising all that stuff to the 0 power at the same time. So what I say, the reason I show you this is because order matters, parentheses matter. And some of you guys saw this when we were doing quadratic formula last unit, that like if you weren't careful, you would get a um, you would get no solution even when there was a solution because you weren't putting parentheses around a negative. Okay, so hopefully what you're the conjecture you're able to make conjecture being like your like an like an assumption is that anything I raise to the zero power gives me a value of one. Even this gives me a value of one because the 32 raised to the zero power did give me one. It was the negative in front of it that flipped its sign. Okay, now let's try this one real quick. Zero to the zero power. So let's put this in our calculator. Zero to the zero power. And when we do that, we get error domain. Let's write that down. Error 
domain. Okay, so why is this happening? Okay, so to talk you through this, I'm going to actually kind of, we're going to work our way backwards to one of these problems with our zero to the zero power. So zero to the zero power means that I took something and subtracted itself. So let's pretend that, that I could say zero to the three minus three. Would that give me zero? Three minus three is zero. So that's going to give me zero. All right. Well, if I rewrote this as a division problem, I could say zero to the three divided by zero to the three. Okay, just like we had up here. Okay, so let's actually work this out and see what we get. Yeah, I did not like that exponent. Okay, so zero to the third power is zero. And zero to the third power is zero. Well, this is the problem right here. This right here is the reason we're getting that error domain. Because what's happening is we're dividing by zero. So I don't know if you remember this. I had it on the board a long time ago. It's okay if zero is on the top. It's not okay if zero is on the bottom. We cannot do this. And if I were to put like three divided by zero, I get error divided by zero. It's illegal. My calculator can't do it. Again, it's that same example I keep giving you. If I have 35 cookies and I, if I have no cookies and I share them with y'all, we all get no cookies. If I have 35 cookies and I divide them into zero groups, how do I do that? How do I make groups that are zero big? Or how do I make no groups and put the cookies in them? It's impossible. Okay. So the reason zero can't be raised to the, the raised to the um, zero power is because it gives me a divide by zero error. So this only works, this rule only works when it is a non-zero number, okay? So we're gonna talk more about that tomorrow. Let's move on to negative exponents, okay? So I'm gonna go through this kind of fast because a lot of the stuff I'm doing, you can do in the calculator, but I mean, again, don't, don't stress about it. Okay, so, and you may need to pause and copy this down, it's gonna be okay. Okay, so if I put 10 to the fourth in my calculator, it gives me 10,000. 10 to the third power gives me 1,000. 10 squared is, I'll just tell you, it's going to give me 100. 10 to the first is going to give me 10. 10 to the zero, as we just learned, is going to give me 1. Now, 10 to the negative 1, let's put this in my calculator. 10 to the negative 1 gives me 0 0.1. And tomorrow in class, I will show you a video that explains to you exactly why that zero is important, because I found a video that perfectly explains that. 10 to the negative 2 gives me 0 0.01. 10 to the negative 3 is going to give me 0 0.001. And 10 to the negative 4 is going to give me 0 0.0001. Okay? So, this is all to get you to understand why negative exponents work the way they do. And again, I just put these numbers in the calculator, and this is what the calculator spit out. Now, if I write this in fraction form, this is 10,000 divided by 1. 10,000 over 1, because any number over 1 is equal to itself. Oh, gosh. Okay, the lights just went off. Sorry about that. Maybe they'll come back on. Give us, there we go. Okay, now, this one will be 1,000 over 1. This would be 100 over 1. This would be 10 over 1. Now, we could say this is 1 over 1, but we know that we got it by putting 10 over 10, which is 1 over 1. So let's just write that down. Now, how do I say this? Yes, I say it's 0 0.1, but the way I officially mathematically say it is 1 tenth. So I'm going to write 1 tenth. Okay, this is 1 hundredth, so I'm going to write 1 hundredth. I'm just writing it like I see it. I'm writing it like I say it. This is 1 thousandth, and again, this is just place value. And this is 1 ten thousandth. Okay? So... Now let's rewrite this in fraction form with our exponents. So 10 to the fourth is just 10 to the fourth over 1, right? 10 to the fourth over 1. This is 10 to the third over 1. And I'm just using what I had here. This is going to be 100 over 1 is 10 squared over 1. 10 over 1 is 10 to the first over 1. 10 to the 0 is 10 over 10. 10 to the negative 1 is 1 over I'm sorry, is 1 over 10 to the first, right? Because 10, 10, 10, 10 is 10 to the first here, right? 
1 over 100 be, would be 1 over 10 squared. 1 over 1,000 would be 1 over 10 to the third. And 1 over 10,000 would be 1 over 10 to the fourth. Okay, so why do we do all this? Because, because of this. I'm just going to highlight something just so you can, if I can find a highlighter, which of course I can't. Why would I be able to find a highlighter? Oh, here's one. This is what I want to highlight for you is this right here. Do you see that when I raise something to a negative power, when I finally get to my final answer, it's to make it positive, I have to flip it over the fraction bar. So it's, it's reciprocal. Do you all remember that math word, reciprocal? Okay. So 10 to the negative 2 is 10, 1 over 10 to 10 squared. 10 to the negative 3 is 1 over 10 to the third. 10 to the negative 4 is 1 over 10 to the fourth. So a negative exponent is a reciprocal. which is, just for your information to remind you, it's a flipped fraction. Okay? So if I were to write this, I could say, okay, well, you know, 2 to the next, so 2, its reciprocal is 1 half. And 1 third, its reciprocal is 3 over 1. And like 4 fifths, its reciprocal is 5 over 4. Okay, so what I could actually say is that 2 to the negative 1 equals 1 half. 1 third to the negative 1 equals 3. 4 fifths to the negative 1 equals 5 fourths. Okay, this is how we do negative fraction, negative exponents. And tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about how we actually process that.